pools and so on. But on the right side, you have the centralized finance, where you have the NASDAQ, the Pakistan Stock Exchange, and so on. Yeah? And, and we are comparing these. So what would happen if the Pakistan Stock Exchange and all the NASDAQs, they're all tokenizing the assets? Well, the estimation is it could go 100, a multiplier of more than 100 in potentially growing of, of assets. Because when you digitalize assets, you make them accessible for everybody. So now let's bring us down to a bank and maybe a stock exchange and then also all these new tokens and the token companies who are offering this. So if you compare this, in the end, it's the same story. A bank is just a centralized authority which is owning all the instruments like a broker, like a wallet, like a deposit in one institution. And on the other side, the DeFi space is just a bunch of startups who just want to take one feature of a bank and they make it completely digital and completely new. In the end, the processes behind it are all the same. Yeah, we are all humans and we tend to, to behave in the same way. So this is just a very high level overview how, how you compare all these token projects to traditional banking. So if you go now to the regulatory space, which I'm coming from Europe, which I would like to share with you is that also in Europe a lot of things are happening and there is Mika coming in 2024, so all 28 European countries will have a new standard in tokenization. Yeah? So far, every country was doing it on their own, and we are happy to be from Germany, one of the first countries next to Switzerland and Liechtenstein, where today you can already use digital assets on a token, and you can go with that to the stock exchange. And this is big, because now entrepreneurs like you in Germany start to use it. So we see there is a massive potential in growth because we are talking about real estate tokens, we are talking about traditional assets, about bonds, about microloans, and also like company equity tokens in terms of shares. And we see that this is only the assumption for Europe. This is the trend. And now we need to understand how this trend can also be transported here to Pakistan. So Germany, this is just a picture of all the entrepreneurs who start to do it. Since 2019, the German parliament get the approval and also the National Bank with, together with EZB. And since then, there's an explosion of projects using this. And uh, this is also the ecosystem in Germany. It is since 2019. You see here a lot of law firms, you see a lot of platform partners, and you see STOs. These are startups, big startups, who are using this as a fundraising tool without giving equity to investors. It's a non-equity uh, a fundraising mechanism, which is new. Yeah? So for one example is the Tomorrow Bank. It is a challenger bank, a digital bank which wants to be sustainable. So this is how a German STO would look like if you would come with me tomorrow back to Berlin and you would like to do one. Yeah? So you see that uh, it's very simplified. You can raise one to eight million. You, can, um, in, you have a specific budget to invest to raise that money. The time is reduced, three to 12 months. It's, the prospectus is only three pages instead of 100. So you see that digitalization of tokens is, is making the things more simple, more transparent. And the, the Deutsche Börse is still not ready yet. Yeah? So it's by law approved and the entrepreneurs are faster and they do it. But the Deutsche Börse is working on it and it's introducing it officially end of this year, beginning of next year. So, whew, this has been a lot yeah, to process, but how we can transform this now to Pakistan. And I think that we should go the smallest, easiest step first. So let's challenge it and that we create security tokens as well in Pakistan, for you, for the entrepreneurs, and for the National Bank. So tokens and securities, just to break it down, it's the same what happened to email and to normal letters. We got rid of an intermediary. Yeah, this is the digitalization in the postal space. And digitalization of assets for, for, for the National Bank and also for the, for the stock exchanges, that we get rid of a lot of intermediaries in between. Yeah? So this is the potential behind it, and that's why we like it. It's the first step when you consider to implement such a technology in your country. And how would this look like in the global perspective? Here you can see the overview of all digital assets which are available on blockchain. 
And here you can also see we have three categories, the cryptocurrencies, the security tokens, and the non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens, NFT, no regulation at all. Anybody can do it. No ban, it's just a, a picture, it's art, it's wonderful. But the security tokens, the cryptocurrencies, this is a thing where we need to have a deeper view. And Pakistan can go into both. One side, the NFT space, and the one side is the security tokens. And there you can play around with real estate and other values. So we thought about a kind of action plan for Pakistan. And today, the, the stock exchange of Pakistan, they are processing more than 49 billion in a year, which makes an average trade volume of 26 million USD every day. Yeah? This is what is happening now here in this country. So how we can scale this when we saw the potential is going up to 100? Yeah? So this is, the, this is the decision which we would like to discuss also with local authorities. But in the end, Pakistan has opportunity here also to be a Sharia compliant new standard for digital security assets. You can be a leader in your space. You saw the crypto adoption. You have here hundred thousands of developers already using it. These are people below 25. They even don't say the mother and the father that they are doing it. They just do it because it's so easy. So this is a great opportunity where the National Bank and the Stock Exchange, hand in hand, can take that trend and transform it with the learnings from Germany, from the States and so on, to a, to a new standard in here. And this will take, I think, one to two years, which will be tough, but it's now a good moment to decide if you want to go in that direction or not. So, yeah, this is so far. From our side, the idea how you can transform the trends into your country. We are based in Berlin at a factory, which is a hub. In Berlin, you have more than 200 blockchain startups already. And um, we are happy to have a lot of talks with you guys today. Thank you very much.